What's up guys, Jackson here with Toast of DIY, and today we're going to be opening and testing out the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini with AMS Light Combo. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Bamboo Labs was nice enough to send over uh, this printer along with the X1 Carbon, which there's already a full DIY video on, and the regular A1 with the AMS Lite as well. Uh, this is their entry level printer, their cheapest one that they sell. It starts off around 199 if you get it without AMS. Now adding the AMS does almost double the price. It gets it to about 350, um, but you definitely get what you pay for because the AMS feature is super cool. And honestly, for, for that price of 350, I don't think there's anything that can beat it. So it's, it's a very easy unboxing experience and also just an overall uh, easy build experience typically. And I'll, we'll, we'll definitely do some comparing. We're gonna see um, you know, if this AMS is any different than the AMS on the A1, or if it's pretty much the same thing. But And then these right here are the spool holders that go on the AMS. So you can really see that's a bulk of the packaging is uh, this the actual AMS for switching color. Now the actual printer is right down here and it's, uh, <laughs> it's very cute. The build plate looks like it's almost about half the size of our full size printers. Now, if you buy into the other Bamboo Labs printers such as the, the A1 uh, full size, the P1S, the um, X1 Carbon, they all have the same build plate volume. This is the only printer that stands out um, with it being the mini. And then this right here is the spool holder for if you just use one spool. Um, but since we're gonna be using the AMS Lite, we should not need that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna put the AMS light stuff on the chair so that it's kind of out of the way so we can uh, kind of finish unboxing the printer. But it, this one actually comes like pretty put together. That's one thing I will say about the full size A1 is it was the most um, work putting it together. It still was really easy. Their instructions are great. Um, they literally color code stuff on the printer um, to even match the instructions. They give you all the tools that you need. So it's definitely a super easy time. So right now I'm just pulling out any of the foam I see. I and mean, the good news is this printer is fully auto calibrating. Here's a really cool little print that you can do um, to actually hold these because the last time if you guys, uh, I don't know if I can find a clip of it, but I was showing off this for an ad spot and it blew up. So I made this for it. It's a pretty cool little filament holder so you can see all your different colors. All right, so as you guys can see, they give you a what's in the box. Um, so it looks like we have everything here. All right, so it looks like it's gonna be the larger Allen head. Should be real easy to remove. So it's just these four screws all right, so that's done. So now this should be able to, oh, okay. So that this was just a cover. Yeah, this is just a plastic cover. So it's probably like a get rid of, or if you ever go to resell it, you know, hang on to it. Um, so if I remember correctly, yeah, it looks like this one's gonna go like that. I'm actually gonna have to kind of lift. Make sure you don't, um, they tell you not to lift up by that aluminum arm. I'm sure the printer would be fine, honestly, but we'll just lift it up by the larger aluminum tower area. And then it looks like for the last step, we're gonna install uh, the spool holder, which this is one that you, like I said, you don't you don't really have to do to put the giant stand onto the actual AMS. Um, you're gonna have your numbers facing uh, towards you just like that. So there's gonna be uh, two screws on each side. And now they want us to put these on um, and they will tell you the orientation. They also are, are labeled with the color. There we go. Yeah, they actually, they, they kind of are notched. Um, you'll notice in the inside. I don't even actually think you put them on wrong because now I'm looking at it, the notches are different. So just kind of spin it um, while you're pushing down and then you'll feel it going. You shouldn't need, I guess, a ton of force. And now we're gonna go ahead and attach the Bowden tubes. Yeah, so they're gonna, the tubes are gonna be like, you're gonna have two short ones and two long ones. They're basically held in with pressure. If you need to pull them back out, you just kind of pull a little hard on them. Three and four, the longer ones. And then uh, don't worry, they do give you a little piece to kind of sort this out, make it look a little cleaner. So one's gonna go here two is back here. We'll do three there, and then number four here, and then I think that'll allow us to kind of cable manage this pretty nicely. Uh, set up to start printing. So about this distance, I would say they give you a measurement of 50 millimeters, uh, but now we gotta connect the actual AMS to the printer. It's gonna involve undoing one of these little zip ties. They actually give you two slots, so a lot of these can take more than one um, AMS. So you can just plug it into the um, one that's closest to the front of the printer. And then next up, they tell you to actually turn the, uh, the printer on. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go to that step. All right, so we got the 3D printer turned on. Looks like we got a little touch screen here. So usually the setup's like really simple. You're just gonna um, select language, what part of the world you're in, 
And then, um, you know, what I, another thing I love about these printers is you can choose to use everything pretty much app-based where you almost never use this touchscreen, honestly. Which I will say is touchscreen's not the, not the most amazing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Um, but it's nice though because you have choices. You can use SD card only. Um, you can just use the app, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and open up our Bamboo Handy app. And uh, yeah, I've had stuff actually printing in the background. As you guys can see, a couple of them just finished. Add this little plus sign here, and then we scan a QR code. All right, we're gonna say we read and accept. And we're gonna go ahead and bind the printer to our account. Yep, and it tells us to make sure we removed all the screws. And uh, so see now, I can actually even press this little camera here. And it's gonna be a really low frame rate, but you can literally, uh, you can actually see my hand there and everything too. It's eight, it's about one FPS, if that. It's enough to be able to tell if your print is printing properly or if it's you know messed up in some way. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, we'll go ahead and let it do this. So this is gonna be a full um, out of the box calibration experience basically. It's probably gonna have a firmware update after that. So I'm gonna report back, but we're just gonna let it do everything it needs to and then we should be good to put our spools in and start printing. Okay, so uh, we got the printer uh, basically ready. Uh, funny enough, it literally just now popped up with a firmware update. So we're gonna let that go ahead and go. Uh, but all of like the setup calibrations done. So we'll go ahead and press update. Uh, but I already got three of the four spools on the AMS, I saved one because I want to show you guys how to actually put it on. Um, I didn't really feel the need to show you all of them because it's very simple. So this is our blue spool. Uh, this is what it looks like if you get one straight from Bamboo Labs. Now, I will say Bamboo Labs filament is a little more expensive, but it is a really good quality filament. Um, it's very competitive. I'd almost say better than many other brands. And the best part is it actually has an RFID chip, which you can't see in here. It's on the cardboard section of the inside of the filament, because um, you can actually buy the filament cheaper from Bamboo Labs if you get it without the spool holder. Um, and these actually come apart. So you basically like rip them apart and then you can reuse them on other spools. Um, but what's cool is inside of here, there's an RFID chip. So you're gonna take it and this just takes a good amount of pressure. So that's how you get that on. You can see I have my piece of spool here. And now what I'm gonna do, which the, now that the printer's doing the firmware update, I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, so I might have to wait a minute. But normally what you do is you kind of push this little yellow piece back and you'll feel, there it goes. Yeah, you'll actually, so you can actually see the filament going through the tube. Um, it'll go as far as it needs to uh, until it basically reaches the print head and then that's it. Um, it's very simple. And the actual app and printer will literally know which filament is in which spot. Uh, so it's not good to go through and manually calibrate this each time. It, it actually knows uh, what color and what type it is. I went all, ba by the way, PLA basic from Bamboo Labs. Um, I kind of realized with my other printers, because I mix and match, you know, I had like some PLA, some PETG. You can't really print with those at the same time. I think there's ways to do it, but I don't know if you can do it through anything that's Bamboo Labs. You might have to use a, a third party um, software. And honestly, I just don't really feel like doing that. So this time I made sure that I just got three compatible um, spools so that we can actually print four different colors at the same time. All right, so, so far we have only installed uh, all of the 3D filaments, got the printer set up, did the firmware update, and that's it. And I'm gonna show you guys now, we can basically just open up the Mambu Handy app. I already found the first print that I wanna do. Um, you guys will figure this out pretty quickly if you uh, have 3D printers, but especially this kind, it basically has to discard a filament, especially when it's changing filaments out and whatnot. So it'll make little tiny pieces of filament um, and they just go on the ground. So this is a way that you can make sure that that doesn't happen because it's kind of annoying. They just go everywhere. Um, and we're gonna print one of these off. Let's do standard tall because I was, it seems like a lot of people were printing deflectors for these. So I'm assuming it kind of shoots the filament a little bit sometimes. Um, so we'll do this. All right. And um, yeah, I think, you know what, we'll probably use white just because honestly, it'll kind of, it'll sort of match the printer and also white's probably like one of my lesser favorite filaments to use. Um, so we'll do bed leveling. I like to use that for almost every print unless I'm like printing a lot in a row and I know the bed's nice and leveled. We're only gonna make one copy. You can actually go into the 3D um, view and see what it's gonna look like. This is actually the build plate too. So you can see this thing's gonna be huge. It's gonna take up the like whole entire build plate. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, it's gonna use 84, 83 grams of filament. There's a thousand on each spool. Uh, it's gonna take 5.5 hours. It's gonna be a long print, guys. But uh, let's go ahead. We'll let flow calibration as well. Just I don't normally do that one, but on its first try, 
um, I don't mind doing it. Uh, so I'm actually gonna head out for the day. Um, but I'm gonna let this start printing and I can actually watch this from my phone, but you can see it's gonna send it to the printer. Um, you can actually see in real time where it's sending it to the printer. And then you're gonna start to see the temps go up and everything and then it'll start, uh, once it, it, it'll take a few minutes to calibrate, um, but once it does that, it's ready to start printing. All right guys, we got yet another print done. Uh, this was a little articulating spider. Um, for anyone wondering, this little guy in the background is basically just a uh, little tower um, to help change the filament colors between uh, each switch because obviously we used AMS. We used three different colors for this little articulating spider print, which it's the plate's still kind of hot, so I, I literally can't even peel it up yet. I do recommend waiting till the plate cools down. Um, but the only downside with uh, AMS is you do use or waste a lot of filament. Um, when it's switching each time, but this can be remedied. You can actually cancel um, having this filament block print out. You don't actually have to do it. Um, and you can also even mess with the G code to make it to where you barely waste any filament at all. This was just printed straight from my phone. Uh, this print right here took about four and a half hours. If I did just one color, it would have taken about an hour. Um, and I think it only, it didn't use a ton of filament surprisingly, but overall guys, this printer is freaking awesome. This is actually the full size A1, which you can see it's actually a pretty different looking printer. Um, but the AMS light is the exact same from what I can tell. The printer itself is just a little bit different, but it still works all the same, just smaller prints basically overall. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you check out Toasty Bros. Also check out Toasty Clips, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.